Hey everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. If you're new here, my name is Jasmine, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. One of the things that I wanted to do was to review some of the handbags that I own because I know that these videos are very helpful, especially when you're going to be purchasing a pretty high-end, hefty price tag handbag. I would totally watch every video possible and look at everyone's input and everybody's point of view before I made that purchase. So I'm happy to contribute. I know there are loads of videos on classic flaps, not so much on reissues, but um, they are popping up. And I thought it would be a fitting time to do this video now, seeing as with the Chanel 20K Fall Winter Collection, as well as with the Mattia Dat Collection, there were a lot of reissues. And classic flaps, they said, usually will be in for cruise, but for this particular fall winter collection, which we're still awaiting shipments on, um, so they'll be trickling in because of course the manufacturing was affected by the pandemic that we're going through. There are a lot of uh, reissues in this collection. So if you have your eye on a reissue, you might want to stick around and watch this video. So the reissue bag, very briefly, this is uh, Coco Chanel's original design. The difference being that there is no CC logo turn lock that you normally see on Chanel handbag. When you think of Chanel handbags, you think of that CC logo turn lock. But on the original design, it didn't have it. It had this Mademoiselle turn lock, which is a rectangular lock. And if you see here, very faintly inscribed here, it says Chanel. And then you turn the lock and open it. So this is called the Mademoiselle turn lock. Chanel refers to this style as a 2.55. I think we call it as a reissue, but it is a 2.55 if you go on their website. Why it's called 2.55 is because it was originally uh, unleashed February 1955. And then it was reissued from the archives by Karl Lagerfeld and they brought back the design. So after he had adopted this bag, the 2.55 with the big double C logo that's Karl Lagerfeld's design, not Coco Chanel's design. And people will often call the classic flap with the CC logo a 2.55, which is not accurate. That's not a 2.55, that's a classic flap. This is a 2.55 with the rectangular turn lock. I hope that's clear. Often the reissues are done in a distressed calfskin. I learned this from Super Jacob. Super Jacob has a pretty hefty channel on YouTube. If you love anything Chanel, I suggest you do follow him. He has a wealth of knowledge and really has a knack for Chanel handbags. So if you want to learn more, I would watch his videos. And he had talked about how the reissue was brought back. Uh, so basically, the bag was found smushed, okay? So as you can see, the there's kind of like a fold on the bottom. So when you get the bag, you pop it in from the sides like so. This is how you get the bag. So there's this sort of point at the bottom and there the structure or the reinforcement of the bag is made such that you can pop it in and that you can fold the bag. Some people get nervous about this, I don't really mind, but you can fold the bag like so. So it was said that Karl Lagerfeld found the 2.55 flattened like so, and then when he reissued the bag, he incorporated that sort of point or fold to mimic that. And the distressed calfskin makes it look vintage and old and whatnot. The other difference between this and the classic flap, so you can just pop that thing back, is the chain. So the chain doesn't have the leather intertwined. It's a beautiful chain. So if you look at this detail of the chain, it's like a braided chain, very, very pretty, um, very liquidy and smooth. It's very comfortable. Like it doesn't squeak or anything like that. It's like jewelry. It's really, really nice. That's the basics of the bag. The inside does have the double flap. So you've got the double flap, maroon interior. You've got the CCs stitched in the flap. Inside you have the um, stamping. So mine is Chanel made in France. 
you have the two gusset pockets, you have the lipstick holder, maroon interior, you have a front pocket, you have a button here for the second flap. Behind this, just like the classic flaps, you have a pocket back here where your hand can go in and you've got a zip pocket that you can get your hands in to the top. So just like how I showed you with the classic flap, same layout, same pocket on the back. The only differences are you've got a different chain, you have a mademoiselle turn lock, and you have a collapsible, foldable bag. So this bag is designed to lay flat on the body, okay? You can pop it back up easily. So some people don't like that look. Uh, I'm good with either. But the way that the bag sits is it, it lays flat against the body. It's more, it tends to be more pointy at the top. And I think because this material that they use uh, for this finish is not as stiff, right? So you can get reissue bags seasonally in say caviar or calfskin and it's not distressed. Um, they're a little bit more stiff, but generally speaking, they're gonna come with the distressed finish and they're fairly soft, very smushy, very lightweight, okay? I first discovered this bag from Eva in the city when she did get her reissue bag. Uh, that's because she purchased a jumbo uh, classic flap and it made her very uncomfortable to wear that bag because it was heavy and also because it was very loud with the logo and she felt like it didn't fit her personality and she exchanged, well no, she sold it and then used the money and purchased the reissue flap and she was very happy. After I saw her video and I'm like, you know what, I really like that concept. I really like that this is a very subtle design. It's also so lightweight. It's very lightweight in comparison to the jumbo. I'll insert the weight here as well. Um, and then if you want to compare it to the weights of the classic flaps, then you can watch that video because I have the weights and all that in there. So it's a very subtle handbag and very lightweight. And I liked the combination. So this particular combination in the black distressed calfskin with the ruthenium hardware, which is kind of like a gunmetal hardware that's not shiny. It looks very, um, you know, sort of old and vintage, so you can't really tell if there's any scratches. So this particular lock, if you get it in the shiny hardware, you will get like that windshield wiper scratch on the turn plate, which I found. Remember if I did that unboxing, the unboxing fail when I purchased the gold mini reissue. Uh, right from the boutique, I noticed it had a scratch, but I didn't care because that bag was very, very beautiful. Uh, but then I ended up returning that bag very quickly because I realized it had very similar bags. So anyway, that's a long story, but if you want to watch that unboxing, I'll also link it as well. Uh, that was an entirely different bag. It had very shiny gold hardware. But usually with the aged hardware, you don't have that issue because it is can this, any scratches are camouflaged. I find this to be a very carefree bag just because of the distressing of the calfskin. So scratches and all that are minimal, but yet still soft to touch. It just feels so luxurious. And it's a very it's a very different style of bag. Like not a lot of people recognize it. And that's what I like about this bag because it's luxury for you and it feels so nice to touch, but nobody would ever really know off the bat that this is a Chanel handbag only people who know Chanel will know that this is a Chanel handbag and I really think that's very special. It's like if you know, you know. And if you know, then you're part of part of this crowd and you're you get me. And I really really like that and I love how just edgy this combination looks. I know it comes with an aged gold hardware too, but this particular combination is very edgy looking and I really really like it for that reason. This comes in various different sizes. I have the largest size. So with the sizing, I know we as a community make things up a lot, but there's a reason for it. So the item codes of these items used to be different a long time ago. So the ending or the N3 digits people would use for sizing. So this size would end in a 227. The size below this would end in a 226. 
and the size below that was a 225 and then a size below that was a 224 and then now we have a mini size where you have the two grommets so that's I think that's new um, fairly new right but anyway so this is the 227 size by that standard but on the website this is called the maxi size so this is the maxi size it's not as big as the maxi uh, classic flap it's between the maxi classic flap and the jumbo flap sorry to confuse you but this is the largest size and the reason why I chose the largest size was because this is a very casual looking bag and I wanted it to be big enough to fit all of my essentials so how I purchased this bag I was visiting Paris and I was there at the boutique I was deciding between I was at the 31 Rue Cambon uh, boutique and I wanted to get the reissue so I was there and I looked at this size and the medium size I'll probably insert a photo because I remember taking photos and deciding between the two and to me they didn't look too different so I'm talking about the 227 size and the 226 size which this is the maxi and that is like the regular size I'll look it up but I was assigned between the two and the selling factor for the 226 size or the smaller size was that it was a made in France piece and the bigger size was a made in Italy piece. Now there's no huge difference between the two. It doesn't matter. But in my heart, I was like, I want a made in France piece. So typically the larger bags are always made in Italy. And that's what sales associates told me, that they don't make the large bags in France. All of the large bags, such as the Maxi Classic Flap, Jumbo Classic Flap, and the Maxi uh, Reissue Bag, are all made in Italy. Same with the boy bags. And I found it, okay, I was like, you know what, I have a few made in Italy pieces. I really want a made in France piece. So I purchased the smaller size. And the smaller size was great, so I brought it back and uh, it was wonderful I thought it was it was just a tad smaller than this but I found it we didn't really serve the purpose I was looking for I was looking for like a day bag that I could wear during the day and put everything in makeup bag like you name it and at the time I was at a point in my life where I was carrying a lot more than I do right now but I can see in the future that I, I will need to carry a lot more as well so let's say if you have kids and whatnot you're gonna have to carry more on you so I wanted a bigger size that was casual versus if it was a dressier looking bag, let's say if I had it with gold hardware, I would get a smaller size. So I purchased that bag and I brought it back, lovely, and one time I was looking in that bag and inside the stitching, like it, I had like a seam going down the back of the bag and I didn't notice that. So I took a photo of it and I sent it, I sent an email to the boutique that I purchased it from, so 31 Rue Cambo. And then Chanel Corporate head office got back to me and they said, uh, Madame, that is actually a defect. So could you please return the bag and we'll give you a new one? And I said, well, I don't live in France. I don't live in Paris. I live in Toronto. And they said, not a problem. We will uh, connect with your local boutiques and we'll arrange for an exchange. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was about a couple of months since I purchased the bag and, um, and Chanel customer service has always been wonderful. I've never had a bad experience. It's always been wonderful with repairs, replacements and whatnot. I've had a very good experience. So that's why I really am dedicated to the brand. Uh, I haven't had such a good experience with Louis Vuitton and I'll get into that in another video and that's kind of why I gravitate more towards Chanel like that's my it's one of my favorite brands so I said oh okay and I said well I have a made in France bag I don't want a different bag and they said well we'll go we'll, we'll locate one for you in the boutique so I went to the Yorkdale boutique that's where they told me I can go and uh, they arranged the, the sales associate there she said we don't have the medium size but we have the larger size and I looked at the larger size and I was tempted but it was like a made in Italy piece I was like no I, I want like I want the same bag as I have and she said you know what we don't have it but we can give you store credit for your bag and then when it comes in you can purchase the bag so anytime they do that I don't really like to take store credit because here's why 
by the time your bag comes, the price is going to increase and then you're going to have to pay more for the bag. So I always like to exchange it right there and then, or I just tell them, you know what, keep the bag. When the bag comes in, then you can give it to me. That's a tip. So I uh, was there and I said, you know what, like, if we're going to do that, let me just see what else you have. And that's at the time when I was thinking of getting the Maxi Classic Flap. So Maxi Classic Flap, I ended up seeing they had two I was like you know what I'm gonna give this back to you and then we'll use the store credit towards the maxi classic flap and I'll pay the difference so I ended up doing that and that's how I bought my maxi classic flap a couple of months later my husband and I were visiting Las Vegas we were staying at the Wynn Las Vegas is very dangerous because at these hotels you have Chanel boutiques downstairs and they're open till midnight you can come out of your room and then go to Chanel and it's it's great there's four boutiques that you can walk to one at Wynn, one at Encore, which are connected, then there's one at Bellagio, and then there's one at the Fashion Show Mall inside the Neiman Marcus. So shopping for Chanel in the States is obviously more expensive for me as a Canadian because of the US dollar conversion and as well as the you know taxes and all that. So, but I always tend to find great pieces when I'm there. Anyway, uh, so my husband was off doing his own thing and I was in the Encore boutique and I just was looking around, I wasn't planning on buying anything and I asked the sales associate, well do you have a large reissue, I just want to try it on and she had it and I looked inside, it was made in Italy. I said, yeah, you know what, I wish, I really wish this bag was made in France, I really want a made in France piece and she said, you know what, actually we have three bags in the back that are brand new, do you want me to go check and see where they're made? So I said, sure. So she went and she's like, I have two that are made in France and they're brand new. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yes, they're both, they're both made in France. So she brought out a brand spanking new piece that was made in France. And I was like, okay, I'm buying it. <laughs> so I said, pause, let me go talk to my husband and see what he, if he's okay with it because we're married and we need to consult each other for these things. And he's like, you know what, if you really like it, go ahead. So I went and I purchased the bag and I also purchased a brooch as well and it was a lovely experience. And then we got back in the room and this is before I did YouTube. I did have my husband film an unboxing for me and I'll insert it, but I don't know what his phone was doing and that video footage is all warped. So I get nauseous looking at it, so I'll insert it, but you know, I'll spare the sound and all that, but you can see me unboxing the bag. And um, that's how I purchased it. So I got a made in France piece in the larger size and I was like, wow. And I don't think it's very hard to come by a large bag made in France. Not that it matters, but for me psychologically, I was just like, I want a made in France piece. And since then I do have a few made in France pieces, so I don't really care anymore. Anyway, it's a very lightweight bag. Why I think you should get it. So if you want something different, um, I know people, they, you know, if you're spending a lot of money, Sometimes you just want the logo. You want it to look like a Chanel bag. Some criticisms I hear is if you go to Forever 21 H&M, they have handbags that with this turn lock that look like this bag. Um, obviously, like you, if you know the bag, you obviously can see that it is not the same. But from far away, design-wise, they look pretty similar. Um, and you can argue that for a lot of designer handbags, there's always dupes on the market. And again, you're not wearing these bags to show other people, you're wearing them for you. And that's why I really like this bag. I'm wearing it for myself and I can wear this anywhere. I don't feel self-conscious when I wear this bag. I can take it to work, no one's gonna really know that this is a close to $10,000 handbag. Um, I can take this anywhere. I can take this to family gatherings and they won't know how much this bag is. And it's just one of those bags that you can feel comfortable wearing day, all day and you know you might need to go somewhere and you don't know where you're going I'll tell a story one time I um, was wearing this bag and uh, on my way home uh, my mom had texted me that uh, we need to go to a showing for a funeral and I didn't have time to go home uh, I had to go straight because we were running out of time I was coming late from work and she said you know we need to go together so I was wearing my purse and I felt like, okay, you know what, like this doesn't have an obvious logo, it is appropriate 
to take it there. If you're going a place like that, I don't think you should be going in with logos and all that. Um, I don't think it's appropriate. But I was like, thank God I have this bag with me because there's no obvious logos on it and I'm not making anybody uncomfortable around me. So anyway, super lightweight, super easy. It fits a lot. I, I really, really love this bag. Wear and tear wise, um, I do rotate through my bags a lot. But sometimes I'll wear this for two weeks straight and then I'll change out and wear something else. I haven't noticed any warp warping of the shape or sagging some people say they get bowing on the bottom i really don't i mean arguably i might maybe this part here um you can see how it's kind of sticking out but I, I really don't see a whole lot of wear there's really no scratches or anything like that it wipes down and cleans up really well you can take it if there's fine mist of rain it's good. No scratches or scuffs or anything like that. I really don't have any complaints about this bag. Yes, you have to care for it. If you really overload it and you carry it every single day, it may stretch out just like any other bag. But I don't uh, see any issues with it. I know Makeup by Tiffany D has this exact bag. So as you can see, the strap is so liquidy and smooth. Like it's just like jewelry and like really no fuss. Like I could literally go from double strap to single strap, double strap, single strap. It's just so nice and just luxurious. It's kind of like the chain, uh, for, you know, my Valentino spike bag, similar weight. Like it's got, it doesn't feel cheap. Like it's a really nice weight. So you can wear it double strapped like so. It lays nice and flat against the body. Your, um, it's at a good height. It's not like up in your armpit. Really, really nice. I can wear it single strapped if I wanted to. And I'll also insert the strap length as well here. Um, I prefer to wear, I'm a shoulder bag, I prefer to wear it double strapped like that. I could cross body it. So as compared to the jumbo, I can actually crossbody this bag and it sits at a pretty appropriate height um, and the bag itself is not too too heavy. I can also do that whole Gabrielle style as well and this is pretty secure especially if you're traveling. Uh, you have one strap on the shoulder, one strap on, uh, on the cross uh, shoulder and I see some people wearing bags like this as well and super super secure. It, it really looks good. But yeah, looks Amazing on the shoulder, easy to get into and out of, just feels so nice. I love this bag so much. I don't care if it doesn't have a big logo on it, because if you know, you know, and it doesn't matter what other people think. This is, I wear this for me. So basically how I store this bag is no different than how I store my maxi classic flap or jumbo classic flap or medium classic flap. If you haven't seen that video already, I will link it as well. So I did a massive review of all three sizes. Uh, I don't have the small, but the medium and jumbo tend to be quite popular. And then maxi I threw in because some people are curious about the comparison of the maxi in relation to the jumbo. And some of you really appreciated that. So I'm glad that I did that video. Um, this size, as I've said before, falls between the Jumbo and the Maxi Classic Flap. It's between those two sizes. As this is a classic handbag, it comes in the classic handbag um, dust bag, right? So it's white, it's got the flap on the front. So if I open it, and you can see, so I opened it up. The chains I have in this flap pocket. So the lid of the dust bag has this pocket and I store the chains in there. And then the body of the bag is in the big portion or the big uh, compartment of the dust bag, the one with the cartoony illustration of Coco Chanel. So I'm going to take the dust bag off and then I've got the bag inside. Now, I was lucky enough to get the felt and everything that came with this bag. So I don't know what it is, um, well, in Canada, we don't always get everything 
with the bag. So in the US, you always get like the tag with the item code and everything still attached to the bag as though it's like merchandise, but in Europe and in Canada, the boutique keeps the tag. We don't get the tag. If it's a brand new piece, then you can ask them to give you the felt, but when I purchased it in Las Vegas, they just they gave me everything like brand spanking new. It was it was great, I had all the packaging. So because I was able to retain the felt, I keep it and then I do, when I store it, I do put the felt in there, like why not, right? So it's got two pieces of felt. Again, not all bags come with this, but you can also maybe make your own, it really doesn't matter. So I have one for the top, and then I have one, whoops, cut out for the, oh gosh. <laughs> it's got cutouts. With, for the button and the turn lock, but again, you can always make your own. So in the front here, what do I have? Oh, so that little mitt uh, that comes with the bag, uh, I store that in there. I've tried to do that so you can pop your hand in there. And it's like just like this microfiber cloth that you can polish your bag and sort of clean it up. Um, so this is pretty good. And what else do I have in here? So I do have air paper. Actually, no, I used to have air paper, but then someone told me not to put air paper in there for some reason. So I just put tissue paper in there and I hope that's okay. So I just put tissue paper. There's air paper within the tissue paper. I lied. So I wrapped the air paper in tissue paper. So I just did that to help keep the shape of the bag. I am planning to get a base shaper uh, for the bag. I spoke to M Boutique and they do do this. So I'm gonna just uh, revisit that. It's been a while, I, I know I have to get back to them um, about the order because I do want to order some other base shapers and I just thought I'd submit one order and then that way I can just get it all in at once. I'm just lazy, I need to get back to them. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I store it. Comparison of the reissue Maxi 227 size to the Jumbo Classic Double Flap. If you look at it, they look pretty comparable in size. Um, when I put them next to each other, this one looked a bit shorter in height, and that's pretty much because the flap of the Jumbo, it sticks up a little bit more, versus the flap of the reissue is more pointed. Weight-wise, this is a hell of a lot lighter, so if you wanna save your shoulder, this is a great bag to go for. They say that size-wise, that the 227 reissue or the Maxi reissue is between the sizes of the Jumbo Classic Flap and the Maxi Classic Flap. When I put them side by side, these look very similar. And if anything, this looks smaller than the Jumbo, but it's actually slightly longer, you can tell, and a little bit shorter in height. But I would say capacity-wise, this fits a lot more comfortably than the Jumbo. So the reissue uh, 227 maxi size fits so much more comfortably, without any fuss, without having to really play Tetris compared to when I use the Jumbo. So this is a very carefree type of bag. I can put things in and I attribute that to the softer, more flexible material and it's more lightweight. So price. So the price of the Maxi 227 reissue is always going to be the same price as the Maxi Classic Double Flap. So this is the most expensive of all the reissue sizes because it's the biggest size. Now, when it comes to resale value, we all hear, and I've seen, these do not do well on the resale market. I don't know what it is, and actually, no, we all know what it is. What it is is that people will desire the CC logo, let's just face it. If they're gonna be spending that sort of money on a handbag, they want people to know that it's a Chanel handbag and that's probably why these do not sell for as much as say the classic flaps. Now I purchased this in the States. I paid more for it than I would have purchased it in Toronto, Canada. And the reason why I purchased this is because it was a made in France piece and it was just the quality, I don't know, when I saw it, it was just such a good 
version. Like, I, it was brand spanking new. The leather felt amazing as compared to other ones that I've seen, and I went for it, so it was worth it. I do not plan on selling this bag. I don't think I ever will. This is something that brings me such joy that I will never sell it, so resale value doesn't matter to me. And again, if you watched my video on the prices as compared to gold, you'll understand why we shouldn't really worry so much about resale value. But that being said, if you did want to sell this, you probably won't get as much money as if you were to sell a classic flop. But it, the good news is, is if you are looking for this on the pre-loved market, that you'll probably get a pretty good deal. So when I go on to say fashion file, I see these on there. Um, the condition, I don't see, I don't really see the best condition of these bags and I see a lot of sagging and bowing um, and like the corners really pointed. Um, you get that sort of bowing here. And of course, any bag with structure loss, even a jumbo classic flap or even a maxi classic flap, will not sell for as much as something that retains its structure. So, um, you know, you can always uh, do your diligence, take a look at the item that's offered, see the condition, and if you are in living in the US, you're lucky because it's not as much of a hassle to return to Fashion File. Um, in Canada, we do have some sites and we do have some um, consignment shops that do sell luxury handbags so maybe you can go in person and take a look. I haven't really purchased anything um, like that so I can't really comment but uh, do your due diligence, take a look at the bag. Hopefully this video helps you if you are going to be shopping pre-loved because then you know what to look for. And you can always get like a base shaper, you can always get like a little bag liner, bag organizer and to help reshape the bag. Um, but this is one of those no fuss handbags and if you say you did get one with a bit of structure loss, who cares? You're going to be filling that stuff up anyway, you're going to be using it really well, you're not going to be worried about babying it. So it's no big deal and then you'll plus you'll get a really good deal as well. So that's the only downside of the reissues, just like how I mentioned with the Lady Dewars, um, they don't do well on the resale market for whatever reason. That may change in the next couple of years, but so far, that's the case. So that's the only downside, but other than that, I really love this bag, I don't plan on selling it, so the resale aspect doesn't really matter to me. Okay guys, so hopefully this video was really helpful for you. I really like these type of videos because they help me make informed decisions before I go and spend a whole bunch of money on a bag. This is well loved by many. For the people who love the reissue, they 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 love the reissue because of the history and the quality of the bag. They don't really care about showing that they're wearing a logo Chanel bag. And I just, I just love that special aspect of this bag as well. So if you haven't watched my massive video comparing the jumbo to the medium classic flap to the maxi classic flap, you might want to go and check it out. Uh, so I will link that video uh, below and at the end of the video as well. Also, if you haven't entered my 1000 subscriber giveaway, I would suggest you go and enter there as well. You never know. The winners will be announced uh, just before Christmas time. So I will also link that video as well and you can see all the instructions there. It's for a Louis Vuitton six ring key holder. So you don't really have to do anything. You just gotta enter. So go watch that video as well. If you like these sort of videos, please let me know. I'd love to have your feedback. And if you haven't already, Hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification button so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. If you're into this sort of stuff, then you might want to stick around. Also give it a thumbs up if you really enjoyed it. Until next time, I will see you in my next video. Bye.